I've got something hideous I need to show you. I've never actually shown you this before and I can't think why I bought it. Felt like a good idea at the time, but I have not used this item ever. I don't even think I can sell it because it's rather ugly. Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I thought I would do a best and worst purchases. It's been a while. I've been spring cleaning, going through all of my stuff and I've come to realize all of the items I've bought, which I wear constantly. Do you ever have that? Do you have items? And even though you try and break the habit, you keep wearing that same item over and over. Then you have other items you've bought and you haven't even worn it the once. And that's really what I've been going through at the moment is going through the stuff that I've got, prioritizing, getting rid of things that I'm not using. And in doing so, I found a few items. One in particular is new. I've never shown you it. I don't know why I bought it. It's, they're so ugly, in my opinion. I think they're really ugly and I will probably try and sell them, but I realistically, I don't think I'm gonna get much for it. But anyway, let's start with some of the best purchases. One of my absolute favorites. I am very into vintage Chanel and this it's actually one of my favourite bags that I own. I've got a few favourite bags, but this is definitely up there as being one of them. I found this at Luxury Promise. And some of you, if you watched, I did a live stream and this came up for sale and I saw it and I was like, oh, I really like that. I don't really want to have to sell it. But anyway, I went on camera and I was like, oh, you know, this bag. And then it sold. And my husband, I didn't realise he'd been watching he bought it for me off the live stream. And for that reason, I can't see myself ever selling this. It's sentimental, but also it's so timeless, so classic, so chic that I, I, there's nothing about it that's gonna go out of style. It's got all 24 karat gold plating on it. None of it has worn off at all, even on any of the corners. Whereas on a lot of the new stuff I've noticed, that has either champagne gold or gold tone, it can rub off on the corners and it has done for me. On, on actually lots of brands, not just on Chanel, but nothing at all on this. So this is definitely one of my best purchases. The next best, well it's items, it's not just one. The next best thing that I own, I couldn't move on without talking about jewellery. But a favourite brand of mine that I really like, and it's Tag Heuer, if you want to get into watches or even if you're into watches, Tag Heuer is a really good way of being able to buy a really lovely watch, but they aren't so expensive. And this is something that, this is one of the reasons why I'm into the brand so much is I love the sportiness of them. I love their collaborations with Porsche. I really like the men's watches in particular. Um, the watch I'm showing you here, this is, uh, this is actually a man's watch, um, but I wear it all the time. I really like it. And I also have this other one, which I bought this years ago with my first ever proper bonus. I didn't have a watch and I have always been into tag and that was one that I really wanted to get. And I remember it was 1700 pounds, which for me was a huge amount of money, um, but I got it and I'm so glad I did. And whenever I look at it, it really gives me memories of working hard and getting paid that bonus. So they're my fav that's my favorite watch brand. But another of my favorite brands is Idil, and I'm not even joking when I tell you about this brand and how good it is. Idil basically make earrings and necklaces and bracelets. These are all lab grown diamonds and they are solid gold. And all of their pieces, they're a female founded company. All of their pieces are sustainable and conscientious. So they're made from lab grown diamonds. And I did a video two videos ago, th no, three videos ago. And I was talking about lab grown and I had a lot of you educating me in the comments about how actually lab grown are better than real diamonds because they don't destroy the earth. You don't have to mine them to get them. But also chemistry wise, lab grown is exactly the same as a regular diamond. It sparkles the same way. The only difference is the clarity is probably going to be better because it's man-made as opposed to having been dug out of the ground. And you know, there's loads of there's loads of ethical issues to do with diamonds as well. You know, that's a whole other topic, but it's one of the reasons why I like the brand, but also because they are lab grown, it is it makes it more accessible for more of us to be able to buy diamond pieces that sparkle like diamonds that you can wear in the shower. You haven't got to take them out. And these are some of the pieces that I've got at the moment. So what you can see here, I've actually had for months. I haven't taken them out since I put them in at Christmas. They've been, I've been wearing them the whole time. And the way Idol works is that you buy a pair of single studs 
they come in three sizes small medium large i think i have the medium ones and from there it's modular so for example as you can see here i've got the single studs on in my earlobe but then in the next shot that I'll show you here, can you see there is that I've added a modular element to it where there is a row of diamonds that sits underneath the earlobe. That, those actually clip onto the back of the single studs. So you buy the studs once and then you can buy all of the add-ons and you can create different looks without having to rebuy the studs every single time, which gets the cost down as well. The newest things that I have, and everything comes in, I love this, everything comes whenever you order in like a zippy case like this. And I, and you also get free gifts. And both times that I've um, had products through, I've had a free gift. And I think they pretty much always do free gifts to be fair. But the free gift that I got last time was a hair scrunchie, a little zippy bag that I actually use to keep my makeup in, in my handbag and a mirror, like a wooden mirror with the Idol logo on it. What do you got this time? I love it. It's this. Have a look at this. This is a trinket dish that actually has a lid on it, carved out of real wood. I think it's really pretty and I like the way that you get extras with it. But the things that I got this time are these pear shape studs that you can see here and I've used the existing uh, stud earrings I already have to clip these on. So the stud earring actually goes through the centre of the pear cut uh, piece here and clips on the back and that's how it works and the other thing as well is I thought I would swap out the ear cuff I was wearing with a temporary ear cuff that I can remove at night so the one that I've got on over here you don't need a piercing to wear this it just clips on okay so my next favorite item and it's one of those that I was saying earlier I cannot stop wearing it and as we go into spring summer I will stop wearing it it's a piece of ready to wear it's from Chanel and it's actually a jumper from the ski collection several years ago now. And it looks like this. It's a really, really thick material. Well, it's a thin material, but it's got a thickness to it. It's very warm because obviously it's from that ski collection. And I, and it's just got a pattern on the back of it. I find that in the winter and just even in the spring and autumn, to be honest, when it's a bit cold, I wear this a lot because it's warm enough that I don't always have to wear a coat over the top of it. And cost per wear, honestly, this is like 1p cost per wear. I wear it so much. I'm actually trying to slow down on how much I wear it because I don't want to wear it out. But that, that is one of my most favourite pieces of ready to wear. And then one last favourite thing before I show you some of the ghastly stuff, which is my worst purchases is I have, I bought two, not at the same time, um, like a year apart or something. I bought two of these cropped off Prada puffer coats. And this one, it's just got like the little Prada plaque on it there. I adore these and I have this one in black, but I also have one in the nicest baby pink. And I would love to show you it, only it's at the dry cleaner at the moment. But I'm gonna put this on, show you how this looks. It's just, as you can see, it's like a short cropped off jacket and I personally love this and I've been finding that I've been wearing this a lot recently as it's getting more mild and I don't need a coat long enough to keep my legs warm I just want something to kind of keep my upper half warm I've been using this a lot more recently and I I already loved it but it's one of those things that I keep digging out I keep re-wearing and yet again I think you've got to stop wearing that people are going to think the only coat you own is like that one jacket oh I'm going to show you some fails now um the first don't judge me for this I don't know what I was thinking when I thought this was a good idea these I know I know these are some Gucci boots and I I bought them I, I don't know why I, I I bought these probably like three years ago and they've never been worn in their life and I had an idea in my head of how I was going to style them and then I remember they turned up and I styled them in the way that I had in my head but I came to realize that actually that pattern unless you have a matching bag to go with it that pattern's actually kind of hard to work into an outfit and I styled it and I went and showed David and he was like those boots are not it it's like that they are clashing horribly with what you're wearing and I tried so many different looks and I can't get them to work they uh, it's a shame they're like a tweed material so they feel really nice they're trimmed with leather uh, they've got the Gucci red and green bit that goes around your ankle there I don't know I don't know what to do with them 
what should I do with them? I can try and sell them, but shoes, you don't get much for shoes, even though they haven't been worn. And I think they're such a quirky design. I don't think I'm going to get much for them. I, I, I need to do something. I think they need to go. I just, I, let me know what you think. What do you think of these? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Do you think I should sell them? Where do you think I should sell them? The next worst purchase, and it's one I've shown you before, but for any of you who are new, I need to show you this again because it's a very popular item, but there's a fundamental flaw with it as I see it. And the flaw could just be limited to mine, but um, I've seen a couple of other people who said they have the same problem. And it's to do with this. This is the Jodi Bottega bag in the smallest size. And the problem is the zip opening and closing. It basically doesn't easily open or close. And the shape of the bag, so the bag is kind of V-shaped. So when you've got your stuff in there, if the bag is open, you, I find that my stuff falls out pretty easily. And I've nearly lost my phone before because my phone was on the top. It fell out, I hadn't realised, I was out at the time and someone said to me like, you've dropped your phone. But the problem is this zip. When you try and, look, I'm not, I'm not, you know, some of you are gonna be sick of this and I'm sorry, but as I say, for any of you who are new, I'm trying to open this zip. It just doesn't go. Oh, we're on a, we're on a roll, there we go. So now it's open and then again, if you try and close it, You get the picture, it's, it, I don't use it, but, and it's a real shame because I actually like how the bag looks. It's just from a functional point of view, it's a massive no, it's so annoying. I, you know, when you're at a checkout and you've got people behind you and everyone's like, can you hurry up and pay and move on please? And you're trying to even open your bag to get your wallet out. It just doesn't work for me. I, yeah, and, it, and it's a shame. I should probably sell this as well. I need to have a clear out, don't I? I've got lots of stuff that needs to go. Next worst purchase, and I'm actually, so that this isn't like a complete negative thing, I'm going to compare this to something which you might want to consider instead, which is actually really good. The next worst thing I've ever bought is this Louis Vuitton scarf, and it is beautiful, but it is so delicate and fragile, and I cannot tell you, if you're thinking about buying one of these scarves, they bobble, they fray and they pull on everything. And even on the edges where the fraying is, it's coming undone on mine and there's all threads hanging out and it's coming undone. And for that reason, I never use it because it's it kind of looks a bit scruffy actually. I don't know if whether you can see, but there's all strings hanging out of it. It does look a bit scruffy, even though it hasn't really been worn. And also if you wear rings or anything like that, they catch and they pull and, and you know, I've got runs in, in this as well, where rings and stuff have caught and pulled on it, and it's really frustrating. But if you like the idea, if you like the weight of that, because it's quite a nice weight, if you like that, but you're like, oh, I could live without the, the you know, the, the point of view of it being really fragile, consider the Dior version. The Dior version, okay, it's a different colour, but it's a, it's basically the same and I don't know whether you can see but this actually happens to have the Dior oblique pattern on it. That showing? I think it is and it's got Christian Dior written around the uh, around the edges of it. Now this on the other hand has been worn. It hasn't frayed, it hasn't pulled, it hasn't snagged and there are no loose threads coming off that frayed edge around the edge. And I bought this back in 20, 20, yeah, 2018, beginning of 2019. I've worn it since and it's in perfect condition. And so I would say if you're thinking about the two, can you see the weight of the fabric on these two? It, it's the same. So it, it, I guess it depends on your brand preference really is what it comes down to. But if you're not fussed on the brand and you just want something that this kind of weight, this kind of size, then think about Dior. I also have a whole bunch of costume jewellery, which has been a worst purchase for me. It falls, like, not all of it, but some of it falls apart, and it depends on the brand. I have found that Vivian Westwood do the, does the best costume jewellery. It doesn't tarnish, it doesn't fall apart, stones don't fall out, that's my experience at least. Chanel is pretty bad, you know, I've, I've got pieces from there, and it, some of it looks fake. Like, these earrings, to me, look like they could be fake. 
they're not it's just that all of the stones have fallen out and i've given up having them replaced anymore i just don't wear these um obviously because they look pretty bad but for me costume jewelry has been something that i've cut back on over the last four three to four years i don't really buy it anymore that's not to say my head is not turned by it but i deliberately don't buy it because i know that for the price for the price of those earrings from chanel you can get two pairs of solid gold diamond earrings lab grown diamond earrings from idol for that price and the idol ones you can wear in the shower not going to fall apart and they're they're like diamonds you know as opposed to like brass with fake pearls in it that kind of thing but the final thing that is unfortunately one of my worst purchases uh is as i've shown you before it's my chanel boy bag for me this is a bad purchase because the shape of the bag means that it wears very easily on the corners but also the bottom sags out because when you wear it on your shoulder and you naturally without you can't help it when you hold it like that your elbow squeezes it slightly and over time that makes the bottom bulge out and it gives it this flat appearance but um as you might be able to see on some of the corners they've worn quite badly around here and i know it's lambskin etc i get that but i've got other lambskin bags and because they haven't got such a sharp edge on them they don't wear so badly whereas this is worn quite badly so they are my best and worst purchases and i really hope you have enjoyed this video and enjoyed watching thank you again and i'll see you in the next one